This is a tack weld, and this is what can make tack welding really hard when you're stick welding. Hey, welcome to the shop. I'm gonna show you what rod I like to use when I'm tack welding. Now, anytime I'm tackling any job, I wanna stack the deck in my favor. There's no reason to make things harder than it needs to be. I wanna make them easy, and one of the easiest things you can change is what rod you're using. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you know I like me some 7018. 7018 just runs so smooth and nice, but there are some cases when I don't like 7018. One, if I'm repairing something that's rusty and dirty and I can't get it all cleaned out, that's a topic for a different day, but another time is when I'm tack welding things together. Now, what makes a good tack weld? We need to understand that to know which rod to pick. The first thing is you don't want your tack to be too large because a lot of times you're gonna weld over it or grind it down a little bit. So it's good if you can keep it small, but at the same time, it's important to have something that's strong. So the way to have a strong weld that's not too large is to use an electrode that penetrates in and digs in deep. So we wanna look for something like that. Something else that's pretty important. When you're tacking a project together, usually you end up striking an arc over and over and over again, and you're not burning up a lot of that electrode. So if it's easy to restart, that's a good thing. Now, 7018 restarts, you know, they're not at strong point. Uh, something else is gonna work better. And the rod that I like to use is a 6011. Now, 6011 is a really good rod to have around for a lot of reasons. The type of electrode that this is, is a cellulosic electrode. It has a close cousin 6010 that's used all the time in industry to be able to weld in what's called the root pass. That's the first weld pass that goes in when you need to penetrate all the way through your material. And 6010 works great for that. Where 6010 falls a little bit short is when you're running on an AC machine or on an inverter type machine because you know they just don't have the voltage that you need to keep an arc lit with a 6010 and that's where 6011 comes in. It gives a pretty similar characteristic to 6010 but it has a more stable arc so it can run with a lower arc voltage and that makes it possible to run on whatever machine and so I think it's a good pick to have around for this. Now when you go to tack something together, you wanna have a nice, clean start. And 6011 gives you that right off the bat over and over again. Now when you weld with it, you might need to chip a little bit of the flux off afterwards to get your next start, but you don't need to worry about having a bunch of slag coating over the top because the type of slag that a 6011 leaves behind is thin and kind of crusty. So you can go ahead and strike your arc. You start on one side, move up to the other side. You can do it pretty quickly. It'll bridge, it'll burn right down in there and leave something that's gonna be strong but not too big and just have that light, thin slag over the top that you can brush right off then you're ready to, in a lot of cases, weld right over it. But if it's something critical, then it's a good idea to grind it down so you just have a little bit of that tack showing there um, and put that in place. So a lot of great things with the 6011, especially when it comes to tacking. So it's worth having a few around, in my opinion. Anyway, thanks for tuning in today. Uh, I always appreciate it. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions or things you'd like to know, or uh, just hit that like button if you learned something here. And we'll see you next time.